I actually have the pleasure of introducing our special guest. Um, Stuffel's um, Formula One journey started in 2016, um, where he was actually a reserve driver for McLaren, and none other than Fernando Alonso uh, had an injury from the prior race, so Stuffel had to uh, jump in and drive, and I believe he was only the 15th driver in the last 20 years who earned points in his very first Formula One race. And then he went on to be uh, a driver alongside Fernando for a couple years with McLaren. Over the last couple years, uh, he jumped into Formula E, which is the electric version of Formula One. Um, and in fact, last year, he uh, won the world championship in Formula E. <laughs> and now we are thrilled to have him uh, as part of the Aston Martin Formula One family. So, um, Stoffel, if you'd join me up on stage. Good evening. So um, again, you guys have pens and write it on your name tag or whatever. If you have questions, um, we can certainly take them. How about the car this year? Like pretty exciting stuff. Um, I will point out, I don't know if the audience knows this, we signed on as a sponsor last year, but we signed on very late. So the network was locked down. We couldn't actually get Juniper in the trackside network last year. But we've been in the trackside network this year. There have been two races this year. You've been on the podium twice. <laughs> I don't know if there's a relationship there. It maybe. might oh. be the network. Um, so I'm sure that's a part of it. But from your point of view, like what, what, what's allowed the team to make such a jump in just one year? That's unusual in Formula One. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very unusual for, um, you know, for a team in Formula One to make such a big step from one year to another. Um, but you know, we've done it. And, and you know, it's great to, to see those first two races um, that the car is performing very well with two podiums. Um, and especially what's been very encouraging is that the, the two types of tracks, Bahrain and, and Jeddah, that are two complete different circuits, was a, a very good confirmation for the team that the car is actually you know, working in kind of all, all conditions. So uh, um, yeah, I mean, the team's done an amazing job. They've hired a couple of new people within the team, um, a few new aerodynamicists mm -hmm. who um, you know, obviously play a huge role in Formula One these days um, from from different teams, and they've had a huge impact on on that performance as well. So, uh, yeah, there's been a it's been a big turnaround, but uh, in Formula One you can never stand still, and and you know that's going to be very important right now is to to kind of um, keep our feet on the ground and mm -hmm. and make sure we keep developing as well because that's what Formula One is all about. It's all about development, and and now. You know, we've got a, a great base car, but that needs to improve. And hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we can close up the gap to, to Red Bull right now, who is yeah. the reference, mm -hmm. and uh, make their life a little bit harder. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> well, you talk about development, and, and, and I think a lot of development happens through the data that you gather. And Tom talked about the telemetry that we gather. Um, and so I, I saw a quote from Mike Crack, the team principal from, from the Aston Martin Formula One team, and he said, you know, after a practice session or um, a qualifying session, you know, the drivers will come back and they'll have a point of view on what was going on with the car. But before he listens to the drivers, he looks at the data. Mm. Um, now, as a driver, you may not agree with that order, but from your perspective, like, what's the, what, what can a driver learn from the data? And then what can a driver add to the data, kind of the, the context and the feel that you have mm. in the car? How does that work kind of hand, hand in hand? Yeah, that, that's kind of the beauty uh, about about Formula One and and you know the, the com conversation between the drivers and and the engineers. Um, I mean, this sport is all about the data that we gather on track and then um, how we can use that to to make the car more competitive and how I can use it mm -hmm. to get something from the car that I want that is going to make me drive it faster. So um, it's always a you know after every session usually the the drivers will debrief with their engineers. Um, they will tell what they feel inside mm -hmm. the car. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's kind of up to the driver to guide the engineers through the data because the only thing they see is data traces. Yeah. And they have to kind of understand what you're saying to improve the car. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, every session a lot of data comes in. There's loads of engineers that look at what is happening with the car, not only just here at the racetrack, but also um, you know, the majority of them are actually back at the factory in, in the UK. So it's very important that 
you know, the data gets there quickly, gets yep. there safely as yep. well. Um, because that's where we come in. <laughs> exactly, because it's, I mean, it's a very competitive sport yeah. and we don't want any, any other team to find out what we're doing. Of course, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and of course the network, I mean, we heard Claire, your CIO, talk about that. And I mean, these cars have, how many sensors on, on a Formula One car? 500 Hundreds, or something. 500? 500 yeah. sensors or something, yeah. So, so that's constantly relaying information um, back to certainly the engineers in the garage, but as you say, back at race headquarters, which will be at the new factory as soon as it opens up, right? Yeah, and that, that will be a big game changer for the team, the, the new factory. I mean, right now, you know, the team has really kind of outgrown the current building that we're in. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, you know, uh, one and a half years ago, the team was about 350 people. Mm -hmm. We're now um, pretty much over 700 people. Yeah. So it's really needed that, you know, we, we up the, the scale of the factory and, um, and have the, you know, the facilities ready for, for the next phase of, of the team as well. Yeah, new wind tunnel and a new building and you know, the whole operation will be right there. Exactly, so everything will be under the same roof, it's it's going to be kind of a, a campus, let's say. Yeah. So um, you know everyone will be um, in the same office space. Will be better for communication and um, and yeah, hopefully push the team towards the next level. While driving, what sensor is most important to you? Which sensor do you look at? Um, what sensor? Um, or just I what mean, information coming yeah, from the car? Yeah, I mean, th there's there's a couple of things that to me are the most important. It's it's kind of the the speed trace of the car. Mm -hmm. Um, and then together with the brake and the throttle application and the steering application, that's kind of the, the main things that, that you look at um, and where you can see a lot of the car balance from, especially the, the steering. Do you feel set. that or do you see something on the steering? It's a combination of both. Like yeah. I feel it in the car, yeah. but then I use the data trace to show my engineers that look, the corner is going left, but I'm steering right. Yeah. So the car is not right. So right. like, you and know. You're radioing smooth. that real time and they're like. Exactly, so yeah. I, I'm telling that. and. Yeah, that's that's what I usually use to 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 explain the car balance to the team. Really mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, how big is the Formula E competition, and is it growing? Um, well, Formula E is is um, is a very competitive championship. So it's obviously a, a fully electric championship and um, a complete different set of regulations than than Formula One. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you know we don't have. Um, the capabilities to, to develop the aerodynamics of the car. So uh, everyone has the same aerodynamics. It's just the, the, the powertrain mm -hmm. that is um, developed by each manufacturer. So the margins are very, very close together, um, which makes it a very close competition as well. So uh, yeah, completely. So it's different. all about the driver. And who won last year? It, I won, so. <laughs> 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 I was, I was actually going to ask you as well, like, so you've, you've done both. So what, what are the differences besides the fact that, the, the, certainly the noise, we, we, we all as fans you know, recognize the difference there, but kind of what's, what's the difference in just the, the feel or even the strategy? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the noise is definitely, definitely one of them, um, although I'm kind of used to, used to that right now. But um, I would say the biggest difference as a, as a driver is the way you brake with the cars, because mm. Um, right now, it's it's like um, I don't know if you guys have tried like electric road cars or something, but it's a, it's a strange feeling sometimes on the brake pedal because everything happens electrical, so there's no actual brake discs on the car anymore. Mm. It's everything is electric. Right. Um, so the way you set up the brake system is is quite different than uh, than uh, the the normal Formula One car yeah. of these days. Let's say. Yeah, makes sense. All right. What do you love most about your job? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I mean, I get to do what I love. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I grew up with, uh, with go-karting when, uh, when I was young, mm -hmm. when I was six years old. And, um, yeah, I didn't go that far back in your bio. I started with Formula One, yes. but you have a long history as a young boy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've kind of been involved in motorsports since I was, since I was a, a, a young kid. So, yeah, to have been able to, to you know, make it a job now and to, you know, to travel the world, to race everywhere is... Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Not bad. You, you just told me you flew 32 hours from Sao Paulo this past weekend to get here because you were racing yeah, for Formula E. So yes, that's the thing I don't always enjoy about <laughs> it. <laughs> it's a little busy. Did Vettel word Alonso up or did he kind of tell him that, that Aston Martin would have something special for 2023? I think if he did, he wouldn't have left. But Yeah, I, I don't think he did, no. Yeah. So, so do you, well, I don't, you don't need to speculate on, on Sebastian, but... Yeah, I feel like if he had thought that the team was going to make this kind of jump, he would have thought twice about retiring, I would imagine. I, I, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end, it's it's his personal decision. Sure. So I think um, he wanted to move on to the next stage of his life and spend a little bit more time uh, more time at home because Formula One is exhausting as well. It's yeah. a lot of traveling, especially when you've you know got a wife and kids at home. Then um, you know you can't spend a lot of time together. So I think he was ready uh, ready for that. Yeah. But. I know that at some point he'll he'll miss being in the car. Yeah. Uh, whether that's now already or whether that take will take a little bit longer, um, it's something. Yeah, you can't get that adrenaline anywhere else. Yeah, which is why Fernando is what 41 years old and still doing this. He's still going. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, what car do you drive apart from Formula One, uh, and have you been caught speeding? <laughs> Do I no reply to that or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have been caught mm-hmm. speeding actually when I was like 18 or something. Mm-hmm. I lost my license for one month. So. Oh man, what kind of car do you drive? Um, I have a DS, I have a Mercedes, I have an Aston, so I have... Yeah. You have to have an Aston, I have, yes. yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, This is interesting, so cars are changing, regulations are changing. Where do you see Formula One in five years time? Probably hard to predict, but any thoughts um, on the direction? Yeah, I mean, uh, the engine is going to change. So the, the hybrid system on the engines will, will change. There'll be more um, of electric uh, battery capacity mm-hmm. in, um, in, in the power delivery for the, for the cars. Um, and then, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the aerodynamics. I mean, it's very dynamic what the FIA and Formula One decide to, mm-hmm. to, to make the sport look like. but. For them, the target is to to really have all the teams compete close together. They don't want just someone winning um, very, very easily. Although every time you change the regulations, you create more chance that one team is gonna, you know, have a big, uh, big difference compared to compared to the others, which we've kind of seen with which uh, happened beginning of last year, which right? happened Everything beginning changed. of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So well, before I let you go, I understand a couple of days ago was was your birthday. Yes. Um, we couldn't let you go without getting you a little present. Oh. Aston Martin slash Juniper Colors. Thank it's you a, very much. It's a gin made here in Australia, and it's actually um, made by indigenous people, and it's, believe it or not, it has uh, green ants in it. Okay. You can see them floating in there. Oh, but yeah. it apparently gives it a very citrusy flavor. Makes your driving experience very good. Yes. Wow. Yeah, don't drink and drive. <laughs> Do not drink and drive. Stovall Van Dorn, everybody. Yeah.